What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, you guys. In today's video, I'm going to show you how simple it is to run a Facebook ad to a landing page and capture a lead. Now, when you when you're running Facebook ads to an actual landing page, you guys, you're 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 really looking for three main objectives. Really, one of three, I should say. You're you're looking for one of three main objectives. So that's either to capture a lead. So you'd be running an ad, and and this applies for anything, right? Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter, any online ad. If you're running an ad online to capture a lead, a landing page is highly, highly, highly needed. Okay, that's number one, to capture a lead. If you're online trying to get appointments, maybe you're, 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 you're a freaking landscaper, you're a, you're a dentist, you're a, a real estate agent, you're a consultant, you're a coach, you're running ads online to get people to, to schedule an appointment. Or number three, you're looking to make a sell. You're, you're taking them from a click to a page to capture the transaction to make a sell. Those are really the main three objectives on, 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 on why an individual will run it to a landing page. So in today's video, you guys, I'm going to simply walk you through the pages. I'm going to simply walk you through um, what, what you need to do, the, the setup of it all, what's required. And I'm going to simply walk you through the full step-by-step -step on how to run a successful Facebook ad. Okay. Now, again, this applies for any platform and it, it even, it even applies for, for really organic. If you're just out there posting organically, bringing value to your community, bringing value to your audience, take people to a landing page. Give yourself the opportunity to capture the lead. Don't just look for the comment. Don't just wait for people to direct message you on Instagram. Send them to a page. Give them something up front of value and capture the lead. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to simply walk you through just one of my funnels, a simple basic funnel, and I'm going to show you how simple this can be. Okay, let's get started. But what I'm going to show you first, you guys, is is the actual flow of, of a real ad, right? So of, of other people's ads, as we scroll through our news feed, okay, we come across a sponsored post. This is a Facebook ad. Um, there's the text, there's the image. So as you start to click on these ads, you guys, nine out of 10 of them are taking you off of Facebook to a page. This is pretty much, this is this is not really your, your, your best landing page. Um, but I guess, I guess you can call it a landing page. And really the difference between a landing page and a full-blown website is, is a full-blown website will have all these options, right? All these different options. This is a full-blown website. This is for sure not a page that I would even recommend um, running as an ad. These people are, are, are spending way more people. Shout out to what, what Atlas, I guess that's the name of the company. Shout out to Atlas. But I, I know for a fact they're spending way more money than they need to. Um, for the simple fact that people are clicking and there's so many options um, and that's where they're losing the lead. That's where they're losing the prospect and, and not even giving, get, get, getting the chance to getting the chance to capture the lead because there's too much going on. There's too much information on the website and that's what throws people off. Let me show you another example. Let's see if we can just scroll through and see a different example. So as I'm just seeing what my friends are posting, um, seeing what everyone's up to, and then all of a sudden I come across a sponsored ad. So if I click on this one, let's see the, if there's a difference. Look, huge difference. I come over here to their landing page. This is an actual landing page. And, and the way you want to really, the way you can really you know, know that is the fact that there's only one damn button, right? That's it. I can't even scroll further. That is the bottom of the page. There is one single button, one video, a few bullet points, and a headline. That is your, your typical landing page. And, and right here, to tell you the truth, this is most likely a high converting landing page for the simple fact that there's not bluff. There's not be, there's not, um, there's not so much, you know, other links to click on. It's one call to action, one button, and that's how this guy's capturing the lead. So, so when it comes to successful advertising, you guys, even just successful marketing online, take them to a landing page. So, when it comes to landing page software, there's many different landing pages, so landing page softwares out there. Um, the one that I'm going to show you, you know, this example based on today is the one that I use, which is which is Kartra. So Kartra, this is this is the software that I've been using since 2018. I create my landing pages. It's my email autoresponder. It's my online calendar. And it's also where I host my digital course. So I do all that in Kartra. Um, there's a 14 day trial right there in the description. After 14 days, it's $99 a month. 
and it runs my entire online business. I literally use one software for, for everything I'm doing online. Um, and so there's a, there's a link there in the description, but I'm going to show you my pages in here and I'll show you these two basic pages that, that I run ads to, and I'm going to show you exactly how I set it up. So, so here's my landing page, right? They click, they come here, one single button, little, little, little image of me over here, a few bullet points to the right hand side, a countdown clock and one single button. So right here, you guys, this is your typical landing page. This is a high converting landing page. Um, and as people opt in, they end up coming to this second page. So whatever your 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 second page may be um over here i have a full-blown training video where i'm taking them through a full-blown master class a full-blown webinar um and then and then offering my digital course that's this funnel but when it comes down to it it's it, it's it's literally two pages like you can build a huge huge business online i tell this to my clients all the time you can build a six figure seven figure eight figure business online with two simple pages that's what your typical funnel really consists of to really keep it simple there's funnels out there that are super you know um um, um detailed and, and and many more pages but really it's just a few pages in this case it's two right so this is how simple as as, as it gets and this is as, as simple as as it needs to be um, when it comes to capturing leads and really offering your service again in this case i could be capturing a lead i could be getting people to download a free pdf i could be getting people to a webinar i could be getting some to schedule an appointment i could be selling something it's all the same you guys so it all starts with this first page this is the opt-in page and so as you come over to the facebook business manager and that's what you want to be doing to you guys is make sure you're running your facebook ads make sure you're running your instagram ads through your facebook business manager don't run them out of your out of your out of your default account that you get from facebook as you set up a facebook page your personal profile your 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 business page by default we all have a ad account that is your 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 typical ad account what you want to be doing is running running these ads out of your business your business account which is your quote unquote business manager and there's a full blown setup of that you got to set that up that's a whole that's a whole other setup so what i'm going to do is i'm going to link a video in the description on how to do that. I have a ton of clients that I run through this entire training of, of how to set it up. So I'll link, I'll link a, a, a video below. Watch that if you have not set up your Facebook business manager. Okay. So with that being said, now let's call that step step one. Step one is setting up your Facebook business manager. Step two is now coming over here and running the actual ad. Now, what I want to show you before we even run the ad, actually, you know what? I'll run the ad first and then I'll show you what, what needs to be done. Um, the moment the moment you 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 publish the ad so let's just go through the the, the full-blown setup so as i come here i click on the green button and if i'm running ads to a landing page i'm going to be going leads now some of you guys have this new updated version of facebook um some of you may have the old version if you have the old version and you click on that green button it will take you to a screen or a little window like this where you'll see all the objectives now here they narrowed it down choose an objective to one two three four five three six of them if you have the old version then you'll see a list of of, of other ones you'll see brand awareness you'll see reach you'll see um video views you'll see um um what's the other one on the old version um shit there's a few other options but in this in this new version it's just these six it's all the same but they just narrowed it down to six titles so conversions is actually again on the old version you'll see the word conversions the moment you click that green button but here conversions is now under leads so right here i'll click on leads okay and then down here what i like to do before i even click on continue is i like to name each step so the campaign step step one is the actual campaign what are we doing on the campaign level we are running let's just call it an image ad let's just say i have an actual image ad image ad let's say image ad and then i'm going to put blue hat right i want to be very short but also very descriptive of this first title because that's the title is what you see in the background as you look through your ads the titles are going to allow you to really know what ad that is if you don't properly title each level you're you're going to forget what ad that was and you're going to have to dig into it click 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 just to see what freaking ad it was i'd rather give it a, a very descriptive title here so when i look at it on the dashboard i know exactly what ad that is so in this case for this example i'm going to go image ad blue hat and then in parentheses what i like to do is conversions 
right? To let me know that that wasn't a video view ad. It wasn't a brand awareness ad. It wasn't a, a, an engagement ad. It was conversions, right? Again, conversions to capture a lead, get an appointment or make a sell. That's conversions. Okay. So I'll give it that name right there at the top. And then the ad set level, as we go in and click continue, the ad set level is where I'm going to choose the budget. It's where I'm going to choose the targeting. It's where I'm going to choose the calendar of when the ad goes live, when it ends. It's when I'm, it's where I'm going to uh, uh, choose the placement. So here in the ad set title, all I do is give it a brief description. So I may go, I go, I may go, let's just say, um, um, $25 a day. Let's say I'm running $25 a day. And then I'll go, I'll go, I'll go maybe, I'll go maybe, I'll maybe add, let's say I'm targeting, let's say I'm targeting only California, right? And then let's say I'm targeting only, only women, right? And then let's say, let's say, let's say what else, what else is there? Let's say I'm targeting, um, yeah, the budget, the, the state that I'm targeting, the, the gender that I'm targeting, and really, Let's say, let's say I'm running, mm, I guess that's it. For, that, that could be good. That could be good for the actual brief description of the ad set level. So again, when I'm looking at it at the dashboard, I can just look at the ad set, click on that tab and know exactly what, what ad set that, what ad set, what, 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 what's in the ad set, right? So $25 budget, state California targeting women. Okay. So just something brief, something just to let me know what ad that is. And then the ad down here, the actual ad, this is the step where I actually put the image where I actually write out the text. Um, that's this right here. So I'll just put the same image, image ad, and then I'll, I'll go blue hat. Okay. So, so that's it. So that's all I need to do there. That's, that's pretty much part of step one. Now, as I come in now, step one really begins, but again, what did I have to do? I had to choose the objective first, which was leads and conversions. That, that was where we just were just at. Now we're in step one officially. So if you're in any of these categories, credit, employment, housing, then you have to, have to, have to go with this. I coach and consult a lot of real estate agents um, here in the US. And so if you're a real estate agent, you have to go housing. If you're in mortgages or, or any type of financing, you got to go credit, right? Employment, if you're out there running ads to find people to hire, you got to go employment, right? And if you're out here, like hopefully none of you guys fall on this channel or freaking into politics because I hate freaking politicians. But if you are, then you'd have to go that, that route right there, right? So let's say, for example, I'm a real estate agent. I'll go housing, okay? So there's housing, and that's it. So, um, and this, this is a, an actual example account. So that's why this right here, ads is not compliant. But um, some of the ad sets in this campaign do not comply with the requirements for this. For this. So all I got to do is update. So if you see that, just click on update, modify ad sets, and that's it. So if you ever see some random error, click on it, see what it is. And, and, and it clears up right away. In that case, it was freaking a click and boom, cleared up. So here, what you want to do is depend on where you're targeting, right? You'll want to, you want to come in here and click on countries. Now, this, this is also on the ad set level. So as we go into the actual map and the actual targeting, that's where I'm going to put all the countries. But if I know that I'm going to target these other countries, I'm going to have to check them here as well. Um, regions, if I'm going to be running ads to other, other, other areas, other countries, I'm going to make sure I, I check it right here as well. This is a new updated version with, with Facebook where you have to, you have to comply right here on the countries. You got to make sure you're checking whatever, wherever you're targeting. Um, and then you go into the ad set level, which is the next step where we're going to choose the budget and the targeting. And that's where we, that's where we actually put the country. Um, but here you got to at least check the boxes. So United States, I'm running it to California. So United States, that's all I need right there. Boom. That's it. And then campaign budget optimization, leave this off. And this is also a form of testing. For today's example, I'm going to leave that off and just go next. That was step one. So now, as you notice over here, step over here to the left, the top left, now I'm on the second step. And I can always rename these titles, right? I can always rename the title, um, but but at least I do it prior just to kind of save me some time. Um, and, I, and I do it there on the first step. So now we're here on, the, on, on step two, the ad set level. So now over here, there's different forms of leads. I can use I can use my landing page, which is what we do, right? Nine out of ten ads. In fact, probably yeah. Let's just say nine. Nine out of ten advertisers run it to a landing page. They run ads to a landing page. All these ads that you're seeing on Instagram, these ads that you're seeing on TikTok, these ads that you see on Facebook, 
nine out of 10 of them are taking you to a landing page. That's website. But if I don't have a landing page, then I can use Facebook's form and I can go instant forms, right? So I can use Facebook's little landing page type of thing and, and, and use that and capture the leads. I don't like doing it that way for, for a few different reasons, but that's an option, okay? And then I can just run messenger ads. If I wanna get people to, to comment in the messenger um, and reply to my message in the direct message, then I can go messenger. I don't do those ads either. Cause and it's, though, all this stuff works, you guys. And all this is a form of testing, right? Don't just take my advice and, and just run with one this one option. You gotta test it as well. Everyone's offer is a little different. Um, so play around with it, test it. Um, but at the same time, if you can learn from people that have already tested, that's even better, right? So I've already learned from people that have already tested freaking millions of dollars and it's conversions to a website, right? That's what works the best. Um, but again, you can play around with these other ones um, straight to a call um, or straight to an app, right? That is a form of conversion. So in this case, I'm gonna go website. And then all I'm gonna do is scroll down. Now the conversion event, this is what has to be set up, right? So I'm gonna take you through this step as well. Um, I should have showed you this part first because this is super, super important is your custom conversion, but I'll show you that. I'll show you that on, on, the, next, on the next page. But um, yeah, I'm gonna show you that after I show you this part. But the conversion, this is gonna be your custom conversion. These are all default conversions. These are what, what, what Facebook calls your special events. But, but I'm gonna show you how to set up a custom conversion to get even more specific. But let's just for now, for today's example, let's go with lead, okay? And, and I'll show you how to change that for sure. Okay, so now scroll down. We're gonna scroll down, keep going, keep going. This is where we go with our budget. So right there, I can change this to lifetime. I can go daily. I recommend daily. And then just going, you know, based on your budget, depending on what you're, what you're, what you're selling, you guys, a lot of people, this is, this is a, a huge, huge, this, this is probably the most common question, right. That, that I get from clients. Like, what is a good budget? Like, what do I spend on these damn ads? Right. This is simple. You guys, this should be very, very simple for you guys, uh, for anybody really look at what you're selling, right. Whether you're selling a physical product or you're, or you're selling a phys or, or, or a service, right. What are you charging? Like, for example, a real estate agent, it's like, dude, like you guys go out there and close a deal and you make several thousand dollars per deal, right? You go out there and close a deal and you make five grand. It's like, shit, you're making five grand on one client and you want to only spend five dollars a day. Like what? Like, you know, like this is what blows my mind when it comes to the budget. And then I ask that person, what do they make for one unit sold or one client serviced it's like dude like you got to spend more like so for example if i was selling a physical product let's say i'm selling let's say i'm selling a physical product and my physical product is when i sell one let's say i make 25 bucks i would be spending 25 bucks a day because if i can just sell one per day at least i break even if i can sell two per day then i profit right? So on the very, very low end, if I'm only making $25 to sell something online, don't just spend five bucks, dude, like actually increase that budget. Because again, you should be able to afford it based on what you're making per deal. So, so that's how you want to kind of gauge the daily budget is based on what your profit is, um, for the, for a physical product or your service. Um, that's what I would base it on. So again, everyone's a little different. Um, but, but let's say, for example, in, in my case, if I sell my digital course for $1,000, right, that's for, for one, 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 one customer, $1,000, I wouldn't necessarily be spending $1,000 a day, but I would for sure, for sure, be spending at least $1,000 a month, minimum, for sure, for sure. So if you divide that, if you divide 1000 a thousand divided by 30 days, I'd be spending for sure $33 a day, $33 a day for sure, because that's a thousand dollars a month. And if I can just sell one freaking client on my digital course for a thousand dollars, I break even, right? That's how you want to kind of work the math on the budget is, is, is based on, on what the hell you guys are making on it. Um, and, and, and keep in mind too, if I were to run this ad, let's say I'm spending $33 a, a, a day, $1,000 for the month, and I only got one freaking sell. Yes, I broke even. Yes, I didn't make a shitload of money. Yes, I didn't profit, right? But what I got out of it 
was a ton of leads and a ton of data. That's what you have to keep in mind as well. You have to take that into account. There is value in that. When we're running ads, that's all everybody cares about is a lead, an appointment, or a sell. And if and if none of those three objectives come in, a client's pissed off or you're pissed off, right? It's like, dude, it's not always about that at all. When you're running ads, it's not always about those three. It is a, let me rephrase that. It is about those three freaking objectives, but that's not the only thing it's about at all. It's about the data that I also collected by spending that thousand dollars. I had a shitload of people click, go to my website. I captured the audience. If it was a video, I had a shitload of people view it. I captured that audience, which I'm going to show you how to do set up custom audiences. And I'm going to have links in the description on, on, on these specific videos as well, custom audiences. So as I'm running these ads, yes, okay, I didn't get a ton of sales. I may not have captured, let's say, a, a, a ton of leads either, either. I may not have got a ton of appointments either. But what I got by spending that kind of money is I got a ton of data. And that data is super, super important to be able to leverage and use to retarget with future ads. So, so you may have watched my video, you didn't click, but I got you as, a, as a, in, in my audience and I'm going to retarget. You might have clicked on my ad, went to my website, but you did not opt in. It's okay. I'm going to retarget you, right? So, so, so being able to create custom audiences, you guys, that's what I truly believe 99% of all online marketing is all about, is about custom audiences. And, and, and you guys will, will, you guys experience this all the time, all the time as you're online and you're surfing around, looking at whatever the hell you're looking at. And then you leave that website and then you go to another website and all of a sudden you see an ad from that company that you were just on. All they're doing is retargeting you. And that, that's what we all trip out on, right? We're like, damn, dude, we were just on that website. And all of a sudden I see a freaking ad from that damn company. It's like, dude, I'm over here on Facebook. How the hell they know they're retargeting you. They know you clicked on a certain website. You didn't buy you didn't opt in, but they know you clicked, they tracked the visit, they put you in a custom audience, they showed you another ad, right? So it's like, dude, when you're spending this money, keep that in mind. It's all about the data. It's all about the custom audiences that you're also gathering by, 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 by having a budget out like this, okay? So it's not always about the sell, capture the data. So, so in this case, let's say I go 33 bucks a day, and then here's what I like doing. I like starting it. I like setting up the calendar, right? I like setting up the calendar. Um, and even though I set the calendar for, let's just say I set the calendar for, for, for 10 days, for 14 days, I can turn it off whenever I want. I don't have to run it the whole entire duration of that calendar. I can shut it off, which is what I recommend you guys do, but I at least set the calendar. I want to, I want to be able to set it to go at live at a certain time. And I want it to end. If I forget, I want it to end at a certain time. So what I do when it comes to conversion ads, I'll always set the ad to go live the next day at 6 a.m. So what what you want to do is 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 what I I mean it's not always going to always be this way but what I highly recommend is setting up your ads in the morning. So no, don't matter what country you're in, don't matter what your time zone is, set your ads up in the morning, right? So today today's the twenty third. Today's the twenty third, right? So so I'm not exactly in the morning right now. It's already freaking way past. Actually, it's 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 only it's almost one p.m. my time, so it's not too too late, but. Let's just say it was 11 a.m. right now, right? It was 11 a.m. So it's the 23rd. It's the morning time. I would set this to go live the next day at 6 a.m. Okay. That way I give that that way I give Facebook plenty of time to to approve the ad. Okay. So I'm gonna set it live to go live the next day. I'm gonna have it end. I want to go at least June 24. Um, let's see. Uh, Friday is the first. I want it. I want to set it to go for at least 14 days. Okay. There is, there's the eighth and I'm going to end it at the same time, 6 AM. Okay. So before, before this whole iOS update, you used to be able to run a Facebook ad and review it in three days and see if it's worth continuing or shutting off. Right. Nowadays, you have to run it for a little longer. You have to run it for at least seven days um, seven to 10 days is what's recommended. So again, in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to just set the calendar again. I can, I can review it in a, in a few days or, or I can just let it run and let it end on July 8th, whatever, but I'm going to at least set it for 14 days. And so what I highly recommend is when you set the ad, as long as it approves and it publishes and it goes live and, 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 it, and it's running, 
what I recommend is forgetting about it. Set it and forget it. Don't micromanage the ad. Don't micromanage the ad. Don't even care about it for the first few days. Like if I if I had this ad run on the 24th at 6 a.m., I won't even look at that ad until maybe, and this is just me professionally, me, my personal, you know, what I do. I won't even look at that ad until, until June 30th. I won't even give a damn about it. Forget about it. Forget it. it's on. It's running. I can. I know the numbers. The numbers are are, are showing. They're populating, so I can see that the, that that there's engagement. I can show. I can see that it's going. But I don't care about the lead. I don't care about nothing. I don't care about none of the metrics. I don't care about none of that until at least the thirtieth. Maybe I'll take a look at it on the thirtieth. Right. So don't think you need to micromanage these ads. You don't like at all at all because again you need. Facebook to run it for at least seven to 10 days, at least let it run for at least seven days and then go and look at it. You know, if I go from the 24th to the 30th, that's six days. Okay, cool. On the sixth, sixth day, I'll look at it for the first time and see if it's performing. Right. Um, but if it's not on the sixth day, I'll still let it run a little longer. I'll maybe run it, let it run to the seventh day, the eighth day. And if it ain't doing absolutely crap for me, then I'll consider shutting it off. Right. But 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 my point is, is that you got to give it some time. Don't look at it on the 25th. Don't look at it on the 26th and start tripping out. Hey, I ain't getting no sales. I ain't got no freaking leads coming in. It's like, dude, you got to give Facebook a little bit of time. Right. Especially if you're running it to a cold audience, you're not retargeting any custom audiences. You're not retargeting any lookalike audiences. Let the damn thing run. OK, so and that's why after we set this up. We're going to go and set up some custom audiences because that's what it's all about. It's all about retargeting your, your audiences. So right here, there's the end date. I'll go show more, show more options, run ads all the time. I can cope. Actually, um, right here, it's saying you can schedule your ads for spe specific hours and days of the week. So right here, I don't know why it's not letting me edit. I think scheduling is only available at lifetime budgets. Okay, cool. Good to know. So if I went up here and went lifetime budget, then I can choose down here what hours of the day I want it to run. So for example, let's do that. Let's go lifetime budget. And let's just say my lifetime is actually I'm running, I'm running it for 14 days. So 500, right? So, so again, if my monthly budget was a thousand, I'm setting this up for 14 days. Let's just call it 15 days, half, half of one month. So there's my half budget, 500, right? Lifetime 500, boom. So now I can come over here. Your lifetime ad budget looks higher than usual. If it's correct, you can ignore this more. Okay, cool. No big deal. Okay, so that, that right there. Now I can come over here and click edit and I can run ads on a schedule. So maybe only, I only want to run ads during the day, right? Maybe, maybe. And, and as you run ads, you're going to see the metrics. You're going to, Facebook's going to let you know when, at what time of day, what days are people really viewing your stuff. So that's why in the very beginning, it's good to just let the damn thing run. Don't even look at it. None of this stuff until you really have some metrics to go off of. Um, so rather than running, so if I, so if I go back to, if I go back to, um, to daily budget, right daily, and there goes my, there goes my, my 33, then, then this is going to run 24 hours. It'll run at all hours of the day, which, which I don't even care because again, Facebook only charging when there's an engagement. They're not charging you to run the ad. They're charging you based on the engagement. You're getting paid per view. You're or you're getting charged per view. You're getting charged per click. You're getting charged per reach. You're getting charged per impression. There's all these different um, um, data points, all these different metrics um, that that we're really paying for. We're, we're really paying for that. I'm not paying just to have my ad run, right? I'm I'm paying based on 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 all the metrics. So so. If someone's, if someone's watching my video at 2 a.m., if someone's clicking on my link on my ad and going to my web, my webpage at 3 a.m., whatever, right? I'll pay whatever. Like, it is what it is. So I don't really care about letting it run just during the day. But again, everyone's, everyone's business is a little different. So again, you can go lifetime and change that if you wanted to. So now we'll just continue to go down. Custom audiences. This is where you can retarget any previous audiences that you already have. So in here, I'm in a, I'm in an example account, so I don't have any custom audiences set up, but this is where you'll start retargeting custom audiences, people who are watching your videos, but not opting in people who are landing on your landing page, but not opting in people who are watching your webinar, but didn't buy it, right? People that are going to your sales page, but did not purchase, 
right? This is where you can add custom audiences and retarget. So, so when you guys are online and again, you're leaving that website and you're going to something completely different and then you see an ad from that company, that's this right here. They're retargeting you. They know you clicked on the link and didn't purchase. They know you watched the video on Instagram, but didn't click, right? So, so this is where you would put these audiences and we'll set up a few audiences um, here when I'm done with this part. So that's the custom audiences. So, and then also I can exclude audiences. So, so an audience of those who opted in, right? That's where I would put that, that. That's an audience that I would exclude. So for example, here's my landing page. As they opt in and they end up coming to the second page, the people who land on this second page are what I call leads, right? That would be a custom audience. And I'll show you how to set that up. That would be a custom audience. That would be an audience that I would come over here and exclude. I would exclude that audience because those are leads. They've already opted in. They don't need to keep seeing my ad. It applies if I was giving away a free PDF. Let's say I'm a real estate agent. I'm running ads. I'm giving away a free seller's guide. They go to your landing page. They opt in. In fact, let me just show you. They go to, they go to your landing page. Let's show, let me show you a basic landing page. They click the ad. They come straight to a landing page. They opt in. Send me your seven tips now. They land on your second page. Those who land on this link right here are seller guide leads, right? You can name them whatever you want, but that is a lead. I would take this link, set up a custom audience, which I'll show you right now. And then again, I have videos in the description, but I would set up a custom audience. And then as I get to this part on my next ad and on, I would start excluding that audience because these are people who already downloaded my PDF. They don't need to keep seeing my ad, right? So it applies for anything, whether they opt in to download a PDF, whether they opt in to watch a webinar, whether they opt in to schedule an appointment, whether they opt in to buy your stuff, it does, it's all the same. One page, two page, take that second page, and that should be a purchase page, or that should be a lead page. Thank you for opting in, whatever it should be a confirmation page. Start excluding that audience, and that will help you with your budget, right? You won't be spending money, more money than you need to. People who are already leads of yours don't need to keep seeing your ads, right? So it, 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 it works on both ends and, how, and, 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 it's, and it's beneficial for, for, for everyone involved, you and the lead, right? So that's where you would exclude. And then over here, the targeting, now I can come over here. I don't want to target the entire country. I want to target people just in California. So I'll go my state right there, or I can even get super specific and put in an address, right? I could put in a city. I could put in an ad a physical address. Um, or I could put in a state, or I could put in the country, I could put in multiple countries, whatever. But for those of you that are local business owners, what I recommend is putting your actual address, right? No one sees this part, right? So if I was, let's just say I put in 3725 Division Street. Actually, probably, let's say that was my address right there, 3725 De Fasadero, whatever the hell, San Francisco. If that was my actual, if I was a local business owner, and that was my physical address, I would target the shit out of those 15 miles if I was a local business owner, right? And I can go up higher on the miles for sure. I can go up to 50 miles. So if I wanted to target, build a radius around 25 miles, whatever you put here, nine out of 10 times, my recommendation is to stick with it. So if you're, if you're, if you're again, if you're a local business owner and that is your, that is your stomping ground, go with that address, right? And, and then what I would do at the top, 3725, I would also give it that title at the top. So I'd come over here. I know before I put California, so I would just change this out, 37, 3725, and then in parentheses, I'll go 25 miles just to give me a little description, right? Just to give me a little, a little brief description of, of, of where I'm targeting. And then I'll show you where that makes sense once we, once we, once we, Get through this part, but but that's what what I would do if I was local. I'd I'd go off of a physical address and and build my build my my marketing radius around that address. But again, to each its own. Address, city, state, whatever. Hit type it in there and always go with the drop down too. So as you notice, when I was typing it in, I saw the drop down. Always go with the drop down. Don't just type in something and just and just and just and then hit hit enter. 
always go with the drop down. Um, that goes right there. And then up here, you always want to be super, super specific with your with your choice up here as well, because all these options are different. People living in or recently in, people living in, people recently in, people traveling, right? So depending on your business, this is super, super important. So if I was a real estate agent, for example, and I was marketing a seller guide, giving people a free download, giving people a free PDF, educating them on what it takes to sell, I am only looking for people who live in this location, right? Even if I was a mom and pop shop and I own the local freaking yogurt shop, I'm looking for people, actually in that case, well, shit, in that case, I might be going freaking people living in or recently in this location, right? But, but, but nine out of 10 times, local business owner, you're going after people living in this location. I'm trying to target anyone that lives in this area because I'm trying to build a brand and I'm trying to get as much exposure to these local people as possible, right? And again, that's back to the data. When you're running ads, everyone's looking for just the, the, one of the three objectives, right? But it's the data and it's also the branding. So that's what I forgot to mention as well. Yeah, the data is what you're paying for. The data is what we're collecting. The data is what we want as well. That's what you have to have to keep in mind that that's what you're getting out of it as well as the data. But the third one, the third one, it's, 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 it's the lead, right? That's the objective one, first objective. Number two is all the data that I, that I, that I mentioned, the custom audiences. Um, yeah, the custom audiences. But then the third real, real benefit of, of all this is the branding, the branding, the fact that people in your local area continue to see you that is worth something as well. So you have to, you have to take that into consideration. You have to look at that. So when you're spending money and, and maybe a lead isn't coming in, maybe a sell isn't coming in, maybe you're not getting that, that booked appointment, but you're getting the data and you're getting the branding. That's super powerful as well. So again, with the targeting, I would stick to that location so I can I can create the 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 the, the branding effect and continue to get people that live down the street to see my ad, right? To see my video, to see my face, whatever it may be, whatever the ad may be. So so stick to the location, okay? So that right there, and it depend on your on your on your demographics. If you're targeting eighteen to sixty five, or you're targeting a certain age group. Um, um, in, in, in the category that I'm in, I'm in special ad category. You cannot change the gender. So right here, I can't, I can't go any other. It's, it's unavailable. So you can see right there, unavailable when running ads in this special ad category. So I'm in the special ad category, category right now of housing. So I can't change the age. I can't change the gender. I can't even change the detail targeting, actually. Um, actually, no, I can add, I can add interest. I can add interest, but I can't, I, it, there's, it, it's limited. So here, if I'm a local business owner, which in this case, this example, I'm targeting 25 miles in my area, I wouldn't narrow it down with, with keywords. I would leave it wide open. Don't even worry about the keywords, the interest. That is more necessary when you're targeting nationwide or you're targeting multiple countries. You want to narrow it in to the interest of your product or service for sure. But when I'm targeting a local area, I want to target the entire, I'm going to leave it open. I'm not even going to put in a keyword. I want to target everyone. And then you start narrowing people down with your custom audiences, right? So, so leave this blank. I'm going to leave that blank languages. I'm going to leave placements here. You can go into manual placement. Um, and this is also a form of testing as well. You want to test this part as well. As I go into manual placement, automatic placement, first of all, automatic placement is all of this. So as I click on manual placement, Automatic placement is when you let Facebook just check everything. When you let automatic placement is when you is when you let them check everything and run the ad everywhere within the platform, right? Facebook, Instagram, Audience Network, which is other websites that Facebook is is partnered with, Messenger. You let Facebook just run that ad freaking everywhere. That's automatic placement, right? When I'm on automatic placement, that's that's leaving everything checked. When I go to manual placement, I can then uncheck. Okay, I don't want it on Instagram. I don't want it in Messenger. I don't want it on Audience Network. I want the ad to only run in the newsfeed, which is this right here, feeds, right? So I would uncheck everything, search, uncheck all of this stuff at the bottom, and there is my targeting. So I'm only running it on Facebook. I'm only running it in the newsfeed. And that's one, one form of testing, right? You guys want to test this part for sure, but, 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 if a budget is smaller, let's say in this case, I'm going 33 bucks a day, right? If your, if your budget was five bucks a day, 10 bucks a day, then you may want to go manual placement and maybe put all of that money straight into the newsfeed. Because as consumers, 
we spend the majority of our time in the newsfeed, whether it's the Instagram newsfeed, whether it's the Facebook newsfeed, it's the newsfeed, right? That's where the most attention is at. So again, this is a form of testing. You want to test both one, run one ad with manual placement, uncheck everything, run another ad with automatic placement and, and see the difference, right? So Facebook, I know it says recommended. Um, and so in the very beginning, for sure, as you're starting out, use automatic placement. And again, build the custom audiences. That's what it's all about is the custom audiences of those that are watching your video, custom audiences that are those that are custom audience of those that are landing on your web pages. Those are custom audiences. Okay. So in the beginning, leave it at automatic placement. So we're going to go next. That's the second step. That's it. Now we come to the third and final step. Um, I already have my title up there. I have my, my, my different pages up here. So if I want to run it from my business page, there's my business page right there. There's my Instagram account. And again, if you don't have your business manager set up, watch the video in the description. I'm going to link it right below. Watch that video first before you do any of this, right? Because you need to integrate your Instagram account. You need to set up a bunch of different things before you even get here. So watch that video below. In fact, you're going to see it pull up here at the end as well. So click on that video, watch that one. That's how to set up your business manager. Um, but with that being said, mine's already set up. So there it is there. And what I like to do too, what I do first, you guys, is I post the, 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 I post the ad on the business page first. So let's just say, for example, I'm going to be rocking with, let's say I'm going to be going with, um, with this, let's say I'm going to run this as an ad right here, right? This is an interview that I did a while back, um, with a real estate agent and, and she's just interviewing me. Let's say that that's, that's going to be the ad. So what I would do, in fact, let me use a different one as an example. Here's, here's one right here. What I would do is I would post it on the business page first, right? So it gets posted on the page first. And then, and, and go ahead and write out the text, write out all that stuff first. And then by the time I come over here, I can just simply go with, where did it go? Yeah, I can just go with this drop down right here. So add setup. I can just hit the drop down, use existing post. I can select post and I can find that post, right? So that post would be, let's just say it's this one right here. So there's that, there's that actual video. I hit continue. And there it is there. So there's two ways to run a Facebook ad. I can use existing post or I can create an ad, right? Well, actually, there's three options here, but it's really just the two. Create ad or use existing post. Use existing post is what I do. It's what I recommend. It's what it's, 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 it, 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 it. The reason why I do it is because as I go and turn off the ad, right? As I go and turn off the ad, I want the post to live on the page forever. If I'm going to spend money on the damn thing, I want that video. I want that post. I want it to be public forever, regardless, right? That's using existing post. If I go create ad, if I go create ad, then all I'm doing is I'm going to simply pull that video. I'm going to upload it. Where did it go? I'm going to add media and I'm going to upload it from my computer, right? And the reason why I don't like doing that is, it, is because, again, once the ad ends, in this case, it all ends. It's not to be seen. And it's like, dude, if I spent a few hundred bucks on that damn thing, and then, and then it's no longer in, 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 on, on the platform at all, it's completely off because the ad ended. And, and even if the ad sucked, I don't care. I still want the post on the damn page. If I spent money on the damn thing, let it live on the page publicly forever, right? But if you do it this way, again, if you just go um, back up to the top, if you just go create ad, and then I grab that file from my download folder, it's off and, it, and then it's nowhere to be seen, right? So I go use existing posts, you guys, for those reasons. So that's what I highly recommend is use existing posts. Um, and so there it is there. Um, and then down here, all I need to do now is add my landing page link. So again, in this case, I use Kartra for everything. There's a 14-day trial right there in the description. Um, and if you're a real estate agent, I have all these funnels already done for you. So Click the link below, set up a, a Karcher 14 day trial, and I'll literally give you a ton of funnels for free an open house funnel, a listing funnel, a seller guide funnel. I have these funnels already done. Um, and if you're not a real estate agent, set up your 14 day trial and you'll get all my time for free. You'll be able to, to schedule a call with me. We'll jump on. I'll, I'll walk you through the entire platform. I'll even give you some coaching on Facebook advertising. Even if you're not a real estate agent, if you're on Kartra with me, I'll give you my time for free and I'll help you tear the whole platform apart and get your business started on, 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 um, on, on a fast, on a fast track. So 
Um, so there's the link for the landing page, right? So there's my landing page link. I'm going to simply copy that link and I'm going to, and I'm going to bring it over to the actual ad. So over here, website URL, boom, it's going to that link right there. I'm going to update post. And then what I'm going to do also is make sure that this is checked, the website events, make sure that is checked um, because that's going to be tracking from your pixel. Um, and this pixel is not active. Uh, it, this is just an example account, but you would see it there. The pixel would be active. This Cantero Media, the dot would be green. And, and that's that. So then I'd go and publish. Now, here's the deal. That is a video, right? That is a video. So the moment I publish it right away, this bottom part, when it gets stuck like this, look, it's supposed to go publishing one of three, this blue, it's supposed to turn green, right? It's supposed to go publishing two of three, publishing three of three, and then the blue turns green. If it does not turn green, open up another tab, come back to your ads manager and push it through over here. So as I come back to the ads manager, you're going to see the blue button at the top publishing or review and publish three. That's Those are the three steps that got stuck. So all I'm going to do over here is I'm going to publish it over here and push it through. So now the blue, 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 blue is going to turn green. Bam, there's the green. Okay, so now, and then I'll come over here and close out that other tab. Just go ahead and click on leave, no big deal. Bam, now we're working this, out of this new tab. Okay, so now here's the deal. I just published it. It's now scheduled to go live tomorrow at 6 a.m. What I want to do right away is I want to come over here to audiences. Okay, and then and then we're gonna end it right here. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how simple this is to set up a, an audience. So now, what I want to do is I want to create an audience around, around around the landing page, and also around, around the landing page, around the thank you page, and around the video. Okay, those are three super important audiences that you want to set up right away. Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna simply come over here, audiences, click on the blue one custom audience. I'm going to go website. I'm going to go next. And then I'm going to simply go off of, we're going to work off the, the opt-in page first. Okay. We're going to go, we're going to go opt-in page first, and we're going to simply hit the drop down and people who visited specific pages. Now, again, if your business manager is not set up, set that up first. Okay. Um, because without the business manager, you cannot install the pixel. You cannot set up custom audiences and you cannot integrate your domain, which is super, super important, um, with, with Facebook now. So, so in this case, um, yeah. So in this case, I'm going to go retention, the retention 30. So, so what Facebook is going to do here is they're going to, they're going to, they're going to simply keep those who landed on the page within the past 30 days, in this audience. Now you can kind of use your own, your own, your own judgment on this based on your business, based on your services. Um, but for example, I don't like to make that number too, too big with this specific audience for the simple fact that let's say, for example, you, you see my ad, um, you click on it, you go to my landing page, you don't opt in and you did that 47 days ago. So I can turn this to 47. Let's say you did that. Let's say you did that. I'll turn it to 48. Let's say you did that 47 days ago and you only did that once. You're in this audience. So when I go and retarget this audience and show them my next ad, what are the chances that you're going to still remember me? Not, not, not great at all, right? Those chances are not great. Shit, I don't even remember what, what I clicked on yesterday, let alone 47 days ago. You know what I mean? So if you're like me, you're online all damn day, every day, cell phone, online computer here. It's like, dude, we're surfing, we're browsing, we're looking at websites all over the damn place. I don't remember what I clicked on yesterday. So how in the hell am I going to remember your ad that I clicked on 47 days ago? Like, I ain't going to remember that. So what I like to do here is I like to just bring it down. 30 is, is really kind of the max. And again, each audience is a little different, which I'll explain on our next audience. Um, but, but again, this is specifically for people who landed on the web page and haven't opted in. Okay. Very, very, very important audience. And here, here's how we also create that. So this is 30 days, people who visited the opt-in page, which is this first page right here. Now, when it comes to the custom audiences, you don't need the www, the HTTPS, you only need everything after that. So you just need the domain. Don't get the www or the HTTPS. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to bring it over to here and I'm going to paste it in. Now, this is where you get where, where it gets ninja and this is where it gets even more narrow and more specific. 
These are people who visited the landing page within the past 30 days and they never, and I'm going to exclude people. So I'm going to click on exclude people and they never, I'm going to go specific. And this one is 180. That's the max because these people never landed on the thank you page. Okay. So now I'm going to get the link for the thank you page. So I'm going to copy that. This is my thank you page, right? So again, Facebook is super, super specific. This applies for Facebook. This applies for Instagram. So I'm going to paste in that link. So look, this is going to be an audience of, in fact, let me name it. Let me name it. So audience name, I'm going to put web class, web class opt-in, opt-in page visitors visitors and i'm going to put only only right web class opt-in page visitors only they never opted in right so they landed on this page at the top they landed on the web class page right in the past 30 days but they never landed on the thank you page which is the web class in progress okay so i named it web class opt-in page visitors only create audience that's one audience. That will be an audience, click done. That would be an audience that I use to retarget from for ad number two and on. Every ad that I create from this point on is going to be, it, I'm, going to, I'm going to use that audience to retarget. Now I'm going to for sure target my, my location, right? I'm going to target maybe other keywords, whatever. But I'm also going to retarget that audience. That audience will always continue to see my ads until they opt in. Once they opt in, then I'll start excluding them from seeing future ads. And this is how we do it. We simply create another audience, custom audience, and we're going to go website. We're going to go next. And then here, all website visitors, I'm going to go down again to specific. And now the 30, I'm going to change it to the max, which is 180. I'm going to paste in the link of the thank you page, right? My thank you page is the web class in progress, right? They opted in. They landed on the thank you page on the second page, which is a web class in progress. And now this is going to be, this is going to be audience name. This is going to be um, web class, web class viewers, web class viewers. And I can even get more narrow with it. In fact, I'll do that. Web class viewers, and I'm going to put only. Okay. And then here's what I'm going to do. So back up to the top, people who visit specific pages, this is the web page. That means that they opted in. They opted in. They watched the web class. In my case, they watched the web class, but I'm going to exclude people, but they didn't purchase. So I'm going to go people who visit specific pages, and I'm going to go, I'm going to change this to 180 as well. And now what I'm going to do, again, you guys, I'm giving you some ninja stuff. So if you guys are getting any value from this freaking video, man, Hit the like. If you're not going to subscribe, okay, don't subscribe, whatever. Come, come back and see your boy another time. But at least show me some love and, and, and smash that like button. If you're getting any value from this freaking video, click like. Please do me that huge favor and, and click like. All right, so, so here's what I'm going to show you. This is Ninja. This is next level. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the link to my actual order complete. So as people purchase, they put their credit card in, they click buy now. They land on my purchase complete page, which is this page right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take this link and I'm going to add it to the exclude field, which is down here. So again, back to the top, people who visit specific pages, they visited the web class, they watched the web class, but they never visited, they never landed on the order complete. Okay. So now these are web class viewers only. So now what I can do is I have now another audience that I can retarget, right? That audience, that audience, I can, I can put out a video. I can put out an ad. Hey guys, this is David. Hey, I noticed you guys watched my webinar last week, but for whatever reason, you didn't take advantage and you did not purchase. Let me give you seven reasons why you're going to want to purchase now and blah, blah, blah. That could be a very specific video ad. That could be a very specific image ad, whatever, to a very specific group of people who I know did not 
purchase. And how do I know that? Because they never landed on the order complete page. This is ninja stuff, you guys. That's why everything we do online is being tracked. And that's a good thing. I don't, I don't care about the privacy. They're, they're, we have no privacy. There's a freaking camera. I'm sitting here in my freaking boxers. You guys don't even know it, but there's probably a camera on me right now. I don't even care about cameras no more. We're all being, we're all, we're all under this whole surveillance. They're, they're tracking all this crap. So I don't even look at it, look at the negatives of it anymore. I don't even care about that. From, the, from an advertiser point of view, I look at the positives. I look at the advantages. I'm looking at the fact that I can freaking track all this stuff from my business and only show the most relevant people my stuff, right? And then exclude those who, who don't need to see my stuff. That stuff's powerful, you guys. So look at the, the pros. Don't look at just the cons and, and look at the bright side rather than just the negative, right? So, so in this case, those are two powerful audiences that, that, that I'm going to be able to retarget to show future ads to. Now, here's another audience. Now, what I want to do is hit custom audience. I'm going to go website one more time. And now what I want to do is I want to, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go website visitors, go to specific. I'm going to take the 30 to the max of 180 because I want this audience to, to I want the timeline of these people to be as, 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 as long as possible 180. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paste in my order complete. So now this could be an audience name of purchasers, web, web web class customers or students or clients or web class purchasers, just to make it easy, web class purchasers, bam. Now I have that audience of everyone who landed on my order complete page. Now what I'm gonna do from, for ad number two and on is I will always exclude that audience from seeing future ads. They've already purchased. They don't need to keep seeing your ads. That's a powerful audience. Always exclude exclude your buyers. Always exclude your leads. Um, nine out of ten times. But also on the flip side, what if I wanted to run an ad to my purchasers? Hey guys, this is David. Hey, thank you so much for purchasing our product, our digital course, um, freaking how to make money online. My name is David. I just wanted to welcome you, and I also wanted to tell you about our another another product that we have launching next week that you're not going to want to miss out on. Right, so I can either run ads to that audience, you guys, or I can run ads um, 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 away from that audience by excluding them. Whatever, but you guys, hopefully, you guys are getting what I'm what I'm saying. These audiences are so important. One last audience that I want to create real quick while I just set up that ad and have it pending to go live tomorrow. Since it is a video ad, I need to set up a video audience. So I'm going to click on video. I'm going to choose which, which percentage I want to go off of, right? I can create an audience around those who watch three seconds of my video, 10 seconds of my video, 15 seconds of my video, 25% of my video. Now, the higher you go up in percentage, the smaller that audience is going to be, right? Like if I have a video and it's two minutes long, very few people, when I don't want to say very few, but let's just say fewer people, fewer people are going to watch 95% of it, Right. Fewer people are going to watch even 75% of it. So the, so, so the, larger, the larger the percentage, the higher the percentage, the smaller the audience. That's all. So I truly believe that when we watch things online, whether you're watching TikTok, Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, whatever, when we're watching video online, videos online, I truly believe from a consumer, I got my consumer hat on today, I truly believe that as I sit there and I watch something, I watch a video for freaking 10 seconds. It's like, dude, I know who they are. If I saw another ad from them, I'm going to recognize them right away. And that's just me personally, 10 seconds. So I don't need to watch 50, 50% 50 of your damn five minute video. I don't need, I don't need to watch two minutes of it for me to recognize you the next time around. Right. So, so here, what I like to do a lot is I'll either go off of 15 seconds or I'll go 25%. Like that's kind of the max, 25%. If someone watched 25% of my video and it doesn't matter how long it is, it could be a minute long, it could be 45 seconds, whatever, it could be two minutes, whatever. Um, for Facebook, for Instagram, ideally you want to be around a minute um, when it comes to videos. It could be for sure longer, but 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 one minute plus is, is good. So 25% is really what I'm recommending. Go off of 25% and then choose video. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my business page. So up here, if you, if you see, if you don't see your videos, that means you're probably in a different page. Come down to your page, which is this one right here. And I'm going to choose that video. So if that's the video that I'm running the ad from, there it is there. Hit confirm. 
And then I'm going to give it an audience name and I'll just put video, add video, add video, blue hat, right? Whatever it may be, right? Blue hat, bam, add video, blue hat, create audience. That is my audience. Now here's the deal. That audience, let me go back to it. Let me hit, let me hit edit. <clears throat> so, so here's the thing that audience. Yeah. Let me just update it. That's fine. That audience would be an audience that I retarget from this point on. Now, remember, I'm always excluding the purchasers. I'm always ex excluding the purchasers, always on every ad, excluding the purchasers. And I'm always going to retarget and include the video viewers, the web, web, web class viewers, the web page, the web, the web class opt-in page visitors only. These are audiences. These are basic audiences. No matter what business you guys are building, those are basic audiences that you guys should all have. Opt-in page visitors, thank you page visitors, which again would be leads, an appointment or a sell or video or video viewers. Those are typically all, all, all the audiences that you'll, that you'll ever want to build. And so from this point on, if you're putting out a ton of video, make sure that you're creating audiences around all of them. And it also applies for, 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 for not running an ad. Even if I put a business, a video on my business page, on my Facebook business page, I can still come over here and create an audience, even though I'm not running an ad on it. So, so, so if you're putting out video, for sure, do this back end. For sure, create the audiences so at least you have the data in the future if you do start running ads. And if you guys want to start running Facebook ads, start with my FB ads cheat sheet. I have that link in the description. Download a free copy. That gives you a, 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 a simple layout, a list of all of the most important custom audiences and even custom conversions, which I'm not going to get into in today's video. I know I, I mentioned I'll, I'll cover it, but I'm going to link that video in the description as well. Is how to create a custom conversion. If you're running these types of ads to a landing page, you want to set up a custom conversion for, for tracking purposes as well. Um, um, and that, that happens on the ad set level, but watch that video. That link will be in the description, you guys. So, so that's how you run a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad, you guys, to a landing page to, again, capture leads, um, um, make sales, or even get appointments. So again, if I brought any value, you guys, consider subscribing, smash the like button, um, show your voice some love, and make sure you stay tuned, right? I got a ton of videos coming your way on Facebook advertising, landing pages, and just simply making money and building your business online. So I hope you guys got value out of that one. My name is David. I'm out here in San Diego. Stay in touch. Comment below. Let me know what you guys are, where, where you guys are coming from and let me know how I can bring value to what you're doing online. I'll see you guys on the next video over and out.